Hello and welcome to Holy Moly. This video series aims to provide a basic introduction to diagnosis of skin lesions for medical students and junior doctors. Consultant and registrar dermatologists will share clinical cases to help cover the basic principles of skin cancer. This guide is not intended to be exhaustive and covers clinical presentation, not dermatoscopy. We hope you enjoy the series. Our first episode is with Dr. Tom Oliphant, consultant dermatologist at Newcastle upon Tyne Hospitals Trust, giving examples of suspicious looking skin lesions. Okay, so th this first image shows a dark brown or black pigmented lesion on what appears to be the forehead of an elderly patient. Uh, it's irregular in outline and it has probably several different shades of brown. It's also quite large. Uh, so this is immediately clinically suspicious. Uh, your main differential diagnosis would be malignant melanoma. And on the sun-damaged facial skin of an elderly person, the most common type of melanoma is uh, lentigo malignant melanoma. Sun-damaged because in the background skin you can see some red scaly macules and a lot of flat lighter brown lesions, so those are actinic keratoses and sorolentigenes. So this lesion would normally be excised or if something like this were very large, you might just take a small biopsy from it uh, and in this case, I believe the histology confirmed the diagnosis of a lentigo maligna, or possibly a lentigo maligna melanoma. Um, management for that lesion, incidentally, would be a complete excision with a 5mm uh, clinical margin, or for ill-defined lesions, recurrent lesions, large ones, we might do Mohs macrographic surgery. Lentigo maligna, despite the worrying sounding name, is not malignant. It's pre-malignant, it's a precursor to melanoma. So the natural history of a lentigo malignant would be gradual expansion over a period of months and years. Uh, and then at some point there is a risk that the lentigo malignant would develop invasive melanoma within it, at which point the diagnosis becomes lentigo malignant melanoma. So this image shows the back of a relatively young looking patient What's striking about this patient is that they probably have close to 50 moles just in this field of view and we know that large numbers of nevi are associated with an increased risk of malignant melanoma. In this case, the lesion in the middle of his back tends to stand out, which we refer to as an ugly duckling sign. A closer up image of that lesion shows that it's darker than the other nevi, although reassuringly it's relatively regular in outline and there may be two shades of brown, dark brown and mid brown, but no worrying colours like uh, brown, uh, like black, grey, pink. Uh, so this lesion would have been excised because it was an ugly duckling in inverted commas. But I believe in this case it was proven to be benign. So this lesion, this image shows a lesion on the back of again a relatively young looking patient. There is a pinkish brown lesion uh, with a slightly irregular outline so benign nevi are typically rounded or ovoid in outline. This has a slightly angulated edge to it. It also has two different colours so light brown and mid brown sort of fried egg pattern that you can sometimes see in benign nevi. You can see in melanoma as well. On this occasion it was excised and found to be a benign mole. This patient presented to the melanoma screening clinic with a pigmented lesion on the right mid-back which had been noticed by their partner. Uh, the back is the commonest site for malignant melanoma in men uh, and unfortunately we don't look at our backs very often so lesions can grow to a reasonable size or become quite advanced before they're noticed. This lesion is large and irregular in outline. It has several different colours within it and it's asymmetric. So it satisfies all four of the A, B, C, D criteria that we use for screening for potential melanoma. So this lesion would have been excised with a narrow margin for diagnostic purposes. And in this case, it was confirmed to be a relatively thin melanoma, thin referring to the Breslow thickness. So the thicker or the deeper a melanoma is, 
the greater the likelihood of uh, relapse or metastasis. So this image shows a pigmented lesion on the lower abdomen of a relatively young patient. See it has two colours within it and it's asymmetric. Uh, even without dermoscopy you can see that there are black, visible black dots at the edge of the lesion uh, which are an indication of growth when you see these things on dermoscopy, they're called peripheral globules. Uh, so, two, so pink within a pigmented lesion is also considered suspicious, so this has uh, areas of pink within it, so this would have been excised with a narrow margin and again was confirmed to be a malignant melanoma. What we're not getting with these images is the history, of course. So even with relatively uh, benign-looking lesions, the history is important. If a lesion has clearly changed or is clearly new and you consider the patient to be a significant risk of melanoma, then you sometimes may excise it even if it appears clinically benign. So uh, this image shows a uh, pigmented lesion on the mid-back of a relatively older patient. The background skin is photo damaged, there's lots of lentigines and the lesion itself I would just say is a clinically obvious melanoma. There's really not much else it could be. Uh, a closer up image shows that it is irregular in outline. Some people call it a geographic outline. Uh, it has two different colours within it and it's got that worrying combination of pink and black. There's also an area in the centre where it's crusted and if you were to peel away that crust, you'd probably find an area of ulceration. Uh, ulceration is one of the most important prognostic indicators for malignant melanoma. So ulcerated melanomas tend to have an increased risk of uh, relapse metastasis. So this image shows a pigmented lesion on the mid-back of a relatively young patient. It's clinically suspicious because it has several different colours within it, dark brown, mid-brown and pink. It's somewhat irregular in outline. Uh, one point of interest is that there's a hair growing through the middle of it, and this is often taken to be a reassuring sign for potential skin cancers, but uh, early skin cancer may well have hair growing through it, and certainly the presence of hair doesn't exclude that diagnosis. On this occasion, the lesion was excised, and to our surprise, histologically turned out to be a benign lesion called a seborrheic keratosis or seborrheic wart. But we know that a significant proportion of suspected melanoma turns out not to be yeah, a so-called number needed to excise. is supposed to be about three or four benign lesions for every melanoma diagnosed. So this image shows a pigmented lesion on the brow or lateral eyebrow of what appears to be a relatively young patient. Again, this lesion is irregular in outline, varied in colour and asymmetric, very likely to be a malignant melanoma. On this occasion, it was excised with a narrow margin and the diagnosis of a superficial spreading malignant melanoma was confirmed. This is a less common histological type of melanoma than lentigo malignant melanoma on the head and neck. So this image shows very ugly looking mole on the thigh of what appears to be an elderly patient. Uh, again, very dark and irregular in outline, asymmetric. Probably has two different colours within it, dark brown or black with a red rim. We don't like to see the combination of red or pink and brown or black within a suspected melanoma. This would have been excised with a narrow margin on this occasion was confirmed to be an intermediate thickness malignant melanoma.